and alive. You're watching Public Affairs. Berkowitz is my name, and politics is our game. And we are going to be doing lots of politics and public policy this evening because we have as our guest <coughs> Bruce Dumont, who's been well doing Beyond the Beltway now for 32 years. And everybody who watches, everybody who thinks about political issues and still realizes the vital aspects of radio, knows something about the Museum of Broadcast Communications, knows something about Beyond the Beltway because 32 years, Sunday night, has it been a Sunday night from 6 to 8 a.m.? 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. every Sunday night, or was it? It's no, it, it earlier it started it, on Thursday nights. It originally started on WBEZ in 1980 on Thursday nights at 6:30. Right. Uh, we spent uh, many years uh, at that time slot, and then eventually, when I moved to WLS in 1992, we went Sunday night, and then we Sunday night taped, then we went Sunday night live, and we've been Sunday night live since uh, 1993. Okay. So, quick calculation, that's almost two decades. A long time. Sunday Night Live. Yep. And so what happens for anybody, if you haven't done this, you should listen every Sunday night because Bruce Dumont assembles some three or four knowledgeable people. They sit around. It's not a lot of shouting. It's thoughtful conversation. Now, sometimes there's some shouting. Sometimes I seem, seem to recall somebody like Pete Chiangreco <laughs> on the Democrat side, and I don't know, Chris Roebling on the Republican side. There may be some clashing. Yes. There may well, be some to, heated discussion. There used to be a lot more shouting. In fact, uh, the, reader that, uh, the reader did a story, this is probably 15, 20 years ago. They called it the shouting show. And when we were exclusively on radio, it was, it was a lot of shouting. It was a lot of passion on all sides. Uh, but uh, when we went to television in 1996, we, uh, you know, we, we were a little more grown up now and a little more uh, television uh, is erudite. A television is a cool medium, they say. Yes, right. So you don't do, want to do too much shouting. But, but you know, Bruce, you, you are, we have this graphic, you are the white line down the middle of the road, right? I mean, people sense what your leanings are, and you may have them. We mm -hmm. all do. You should, yep. if you're a thinking person. I do. But when you do that show, you assemble people on the left and on the right, and you make sure they get a fair hearing, people on the left and the right. And you sometimes play devil's advocate. I do that sometimes. You sometimes, if you have somebody on the right, might throw a question from the left mm -hmm. and vice versa. Right. Okay. So you would know, you know, I, as I walked out of the house today, I was hearing Chris Matthews on Hardball. And, you know, he's on MSNBC. We'll get to MSNBC in a second. And we'll get to the Fox News Channel and the whole thing about media bias. But what's he doing? Chris Matthews is shouting, what are they coming after Barack Obama for? This guy is so perfect. He was so good. He never does anything wrong. I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, yeah. folks. Because I don't, I, this is an unscripted show. So I didn't know. I didn't have somebody say, give me that quote. But I think it's pretty damn accurate. Because we're taping this on July we're taping this on July 17th. You may be watching it in the first or second week of August. You may be hearing people at that time talking about who the VP nominee is, and maybe you'll know, okay? Mm -hmm. But trust me, on July 17th, Chris Matthews, on his show Hardball, was ranting. He was saying, why are they doing this to Barack Obama? Look, he, he went to the Harvard Law Review. He got to be president of the Harvard Law Review where they ranked people. Or they, he said they, they had a blind election. I mean, he made it sound like they elected the president without knowing his name. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe. But he's so, he's, he, nobody thinks he would cheat on his wife, right? It would never enter your mind no. that Barack Obama. He is that good. He's got Michelle. He's like, what was it, the old Cosby family, right? That's right. Okay. Everything's perfect. The guy is... Like, he doesn't. He joked once and said Michelle gets upset with him because he might take his underwear, you know, and you put that, like, near the handle, and people are like, weird, somebody puts your handle, your underwear, and did you do that? Nobody thought ever Brock wouldn't do that. Brock would take his underwear and he'd put it in the hamper. And then somebody later would take the stuff out of the hamper. My God, I don't even have a hamper anymore. But see, he is Mr. Perfect. And Matthews is saying, so why are they doing this to him? And I'm thinking, what is what it that they're doing to him? That's what I'm wondering. I never got it. So I had to get to the studio, so I have to find out tomorrow. I think they're <clears> saying, you know, that comment, you hear this comment that Barack Obama made, and he said, you know, and they, some would say they took it out of context. And he said, you know, you built a business. You didn't build the business. There were roads around you, and they were built, and that business was a part of that. So he's saying, He's saying, I, he didn't say, he didn't denigrate people who built a business. He's just saying it wasn't completely on your own. Or if you're 
to Steve Jobs and you, you know, went out and did something. It was somebody, you had a teacher, somebody who helped you, okay? Mm -hmm. He said, you didn't always do it on your own. He's trying to say, you did a team thing. And he says, those Republicans, Matthews is saying, they're, just, they're saying, they're completely taking this out of context. They're saying he's trying to rip the fiber out of the free enterprise system. So I ask you, Bruce, you hear this stuff. You're immersed in it. You told me you're just completely immersed. Are they picking on Barack Obama unreasonably? No, I don't think they're picking on Barack Obama unreasonably, and I've said on the, on the air, I think that, that Mitt Romney, to the contrary, is next to Barry Goldwater, I think he is one of the most maligned Republican nominees, or about to be a nominee, uh, in, in my lifetime. I mean, uh, they've criticized him because he's too perfect, because he looks too good. Uh, Wait a second, you just said they. Who, who is they? The media. The national... The, the mainstream the, media. The, the mainstream media has created... A, they're, they're not comfortable with people who have great wealth. He pretty much is, he is, as far as perception, he's somewhat perfect. He looks good, he talks good, he's wealthy, he's happily married, he has a beautiful family, he has all the things, and, he, and he's very, very wealthy. He's immensely wealthy. Is this like a rich Ozzie and Harriet family? Yes, it is. Yes, Ann and Romney, people, his wife is perfect. She has MS, but she's perfect. They've people, got five kids, but, but they're people perfect. Can't, but, but, but people uh, the, in the media, they're like too perfect. They don't. They don't like people like that. It's not They're interesting. Not comfortable. It's you, not. You interesting. need problems. You need affairs. You need corruption. You need bankruptcies. You need people who are running around drunk. I mean, this is what you need. This is what's. You wouldn't want a guy running for president who, and so so they they've created his problems. His problem is he's wealthy. His problem, they say, is he's only paid fifteen percent. They think his problem. They don't know because he won't release more than a year or two of his tax returns. And if they did release him, they might show he paid 15% on marginal rates of income because that's the, gain, that's the rate at which we tax capital gains. But they pointed out yesterday he's been paid about 15% goes to charity. So about one third of his income goes to somebody else anyway. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Will the media say, okay, he's paying 15% to capital gains. He gives 15% to charity. He's okay. Third is going to others through government directly or indirectly. If you count charity as indirect government, indirect assistance, is he is he okay now? He's he's not going to be okay with the national news media because they've already spent years taking a story that Barack Obama created about himself, which we now know from David Marinus, no right wing author, who's looked into the story that was peddled to the American people about Barack Obama. And it was fabricated. Not really? all of it. It's you know the stories that that we we heard about him and read about him, uh, and in a news media that just you know you say, went I get this book lockstep. Here. They, they they did Dreams nothing. Dreams from it. my father: a story of race and inheritance. Brock signed it to Jeff. I always enjoy our time together, and hope our discussions continue long into the future. Warm regards, Barack Obama. July eighteenth, two thousand four. He was sitting right where you're sitting. Almost eight years to the day, right? And this is his book, and he, and he inscribed it. So it's got to be true, right? No, no. This this is not true. Well, this this maybe should be in the fiction section. You think? Well, Marina part of says it, that we, we we now know we now know that not every word in here is the gospel. No, but he says it's some, a composite. Some well, some it's a, it's, some it's characters composite, are composites. He says but that according to Mar according to the published reports of Marinus. I've not read Marinus's book oh, okay. yet. What's, but what, is in, the what is the most significant thing in here that's not true? Can you, do you know? Uh, it is probably about the relationship uh, with his family. You mean his mother? His mother, his and, and, and also, you know, the, the, the true lineage of, uh, of, of his background. I've, according to Marinus, he's interviewed some of the relatives. What's the true lineage? Does it get into the birth don't issue? Don't know. No, it does not oh. get it. He does not. He get was into born that. in Hawaii. You agree? Marinus that's agrees. A, yeah, born yes. in the United right, States. Right. So we, we understand. No that. issue of that. I don't okay. think that's. I don't think that's the issue. But he, his his mother, as he always said, his he got his accent from his mother and his name from his father. You heard that when he was running mm -hmm. here in Illinois right. for the U.S. Senate, because his mother was from Kansas and white. His father was from. But it. But at this point, but but but, but you see the news media when they talk about this, uh, Jeff, it's not relevant. It is not relevant to the people who are going to decide this election. The people who love Barack Obama 
or hate Barack Obama. They, they are, they represent, they're represented by about 90% of the American people. And a presidential campaign, if you're, the, if you're the Republican nominee or you're the Democratic nominee and you leave your conventions, you're going to have 45% of the vote, unless you're very extreme. This is a divided and so, country. And that's right. And so, but, but it, but no, but in More so than it elections, has been Elections have always been that way. Because, because most nominees are not way to the left oh, or way to the second. right. Wait. And so a general election, a general election is about the 10%. And how do you get a piece of the 10%? How do you get 5.1% of that 10%? That's, that's the difference between winning or losing an election. But how many and states did Ronald Reagan win in 1980? Do you remember? 44. 44. So is that true then, that it's about the 10%? It's always about the 10%. If he won 44 it, states? It's, all, it's always about the 10% so, because, because it's... So it's, in those states that he won, those 44 states, right. he was winning... 55, 45. That's why both parties spend so much money on television, because the people who decide presidential elections okay. are not people that watch your show, listen to my show, oh, really? watch Meet the Press. They are not. They are people who are apolitical, and their vote counts just as much as ours, but you get them through a variety of reasons. These are people that may get their news from you know the, the, uh, a gossip rag at, at the beauty parlor, they may get it online. Uh, they may vote for someone because they like the way they look. They may vote against somebody because he put a dog on his car. I mean, what, they may vote for somebody because he's a White Sox fan. There's so many different variables but we heard as James to what Car people vote. Yeah, in 1992, we got the gospel from James Carville. It's the economy, stupid. You know, focus on the economy, Garvel's Carl. That's said. 90%. That was in 1992 90%. because we were coming out of a recession. Now, in 2012, is it still, it's the economy, stupid? It is the economy. It, well, it, it, it's, I would be more specific and say it should be more about jobs, jobs than the okay. economy. But so it's it, jobs. It, sh it should okay. be. It should be. Is it, and it for, those, be. for those 10%? No, are, no. They don't give a damn about jobs? No. Nope. They're all working? They're nope. not? They're not working and they can't not, ever get a they're job? Not, they're Why not, don't they care about that? They are not moved by the basic issues of the political debate. The basic issues of the political debate, the debate is held, you go in one camp or you go in the other camp, and the things, one of the reasons, and by the way, this, this, this was one of the reasons, going back to Bill Clinton, because Bill Clinton understood it was the first presidential campaign that was really built not on congressional districts, but it was built on media markets. He knew that if he could expand the base of the voters, he could win. And that's exactly what he did. So when Bill Clinton went on Arsenio Hall's program and played the saxophone, he picked up the saxophone vote. These are people Nobody who, ever talks about the saxophone vote. Well, these are people vote. who didn't vote before, but the, when you say expand the base of the vote, that's right. Clinton found people who were not previously voters, and now they would vote for him. He, he didn't have to change their minds. He didn't have to convert them. He just had to say, you like me, and come out and vote for me. He was a cool guy who played the saxophone. He picked up a lot of votes. Well, that Obama night. did a lot of that in 2008. He was a cool guy. Young people liked him. That's people right. People went to college. People who were in college, they liked him, and they didn't vote. Young people were told to hardly Wide ever base. vote. These uh, very, young people, very broad they base. came out in droves for him. Will they do it again in nope. 2012? So he's got to make up for that. He's got to replace those votes, and he's lost some votes probably. Yep. Some people who did believe in hope and change didn't like the hope and change they got. That's right. Okay. So that's his problem. But if Carville was right when he said it's the economy, and you said he, Clinton just goes on and plays the sax, what was the stuff about it's the economy, stupid? Who, who was Clinton, who were Clinton and Carville preaching to when they said we're going to focus on the economy? Or was that just wrong? 90% of the people. The 90% keeping their 45 that they needed to That's keep right. and maybe picking up a few of the 45 who were it's the it's the extra it, it it's the extra things that are primarily based on non-political okay. factors they 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 may think that one candidate is more attractive than the other they tend to be more su superficial things they, they they may they may like 
the school the person went to, whatever it so, is, they're not they're not you're necessarily me this the show, cosmetic I, things. Did, I, you know, I don't do a scripted show, but I do some thoughts and I do some research and I do some thinking. I'm just thinking, and you saw what I was thinking about. We put up some of those graphics. Basically, this is all irrelevant because I just thought, like, who agree. creates jobs? That I would care about that. Jeff does talk about who creates jobs doesn't matter. Who who? Well, I didn't put it down, but like. The judiciary, a lot of people say, this guy, whoever is elected or re-elected, Obama or mm -hmm. Romney, there's a good chance because of the age of a few of the Supreme Court justices that somebody's going to die. That's the only way people get off the court these days, pretty much. Right. Maybe Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Democrat, essentially, liberal, we could say. Maybe Scalia, conservative, okay. Maybe Kennedy. I think they're getting up there in their 70s and 80s. Some of them are sick, some mm -hmm. of them. So, you know, if, putting it bluntly, you know, if Ruth Bader Ginsburg kicks the bucket, so to speak, and Romney's there, what we thought was this 5-4 split could become 6-3, and what we saw in healthcare, which was 5-4 going liberals with a conservative, could, you know, go back. You could, Romney could appoint somebody for, to replace Ginsburg who's a conservative, and you could come up with a true conservative, more so than Roberts. The short of it, or vice versa, it could be, Obama appointing somebody to replace Scalia. Scalia's getting up in years. That would be a liberal for a conservative. See, Obama replaced two people before, but they were liberals replacing liberals. So some would say, this is the most important thing. Bruce, you're wrong. The most important thing about this election is the judiciary would be to focus on that, drive that home, get people well, to know when you vote for Obama, you're voting for a liberal justice. When you vote for Romney, you're voting for a conservative justice. The rest doesn't matter. And you're saying they're wrong. They're wrong. Is this all going to be about, is Barack no, Obama cooler than Mitt Romney? No, I think, I think. You, and you know, if that's think, the case, Republicans think, are in big trouble. I, I think, because there's no way Mitt Romney's cooler than Barack Obama. I think you're missing the point. The point is, is all of the factors you've just described, they all go into the decision making of 90% of the people. Because 90% of the people, they will, eat, they will, they will neatly put themselves into a philosophical uh, hole, or not hole, okay. but, but uh, you know, uh, but So that, that is getting, or, that is. Or, or they will vote the party that they are okay. comfortable with. They will vote the perception of their party. And what I'm saying is that when that happens, and by the way, we're pretty much right there right now. The most recent poll I saw was that this, nationally speaking, this race is now divided 46 46. 92. So there are no independents so, in that 40, no, 92. They're pretty much already Democrat, already Republican. Well, the, the, the independents are in the, the 8% the, who the, are undecided? The, the, in, the, the independents, the independents uh, generally split equally. Equally. So you're, 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 you're narrowing the people who, who really will turn an election. And, that, and that's why. Very small things. When when you when you talk about uh, what uh, the, uh, the the Obama White House is doing, and I think they're brilliant at it, and I would I would put them light years ahead of the Romney campaign insofar as their ability to manage campaigns. And that's David Axelrod in large part. It is David Axelrod. Your old buddy, you know David, that, that's right? right. It, it is. It's a brilliant thing because one cannot forget that the great political story, perhaps in the history of elective politics, certainly in the last 50 years, was the ability of Barack Obama to defeat Hillary Clinton for the Democratic nomination four years ago. That was even a better, you know, the, the general election was a piece of cake for him. Right. But arresting that nomination uh, from the former First Lady of the United States. And that States, was David Axelrod, without Axelrod. It was David Axelrod and brilliant. Okay. And I do, okay. I do not see at this moment in time I don't see the I don't see the brains in Beantown being able to keep up. So with you're telling Axelrod. all of those people out there that uh, basically this is still Obama's election to lose. Yep. That is Romney's your guy. Not that you want Romney to win, but if you had to pick who's going to win, you're saying right now it's pretty clear Romney's the guy. Hey, excuse. Me, it's no. pretty clear that Obama's the guy who's likely to win this election. I think so. For the reasons you've just said. I think so. And is it helped by the fact that the mainstream media is? As Bernie Goldberg put it, this is a sort of slobbering love affair with Barack Obama. Yes, that is part ABC, of it. ABC, CBS, NBC, PBS, CNN, and certainly MSNBC, they are all in love with Barack Obama. 
That is correct. Fair to say. The only station that might be and is the other way would be the Fox News Channel. The the one thing that is I that right? Think, so yes, the one thing. So he's that, got Obama's got ninety percent of the, the media the, the, broadcasting the, the, cable. The one thing that Mitt Romney has going for him, and that is history. Given given the economy, there are some people, and this these are primarily the independents that I would say that could go either way. Uh, his, history has shown that a president with an economy like Barack Obama ha has and has helped create, they tend not to get reelected. So he has history going against because him. Because of the sad state of the economy. Because of the sad state of the yeah. economy. I mean, it is because better. It is, is, any, it, any, it is better. Yeah, what about this, you know, that question that he said Reagan said? In nineteen uh, in in in, in are you better off? Are you better off right. now than you were then? And everybody Most said yes. Most people would say no. But 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 in nineteen eighty four they would say yes, and so that's easily why Ronald Reagan got easily reelected, mm -hmm. right? And now you're saying if they say to you, if the Democrats say, the Obama team says, are you better off now than you were four years ago? You're saying they would say no? I would say they say Wasn't no. Wasn't the economy sliding down? Weren't they hemorrhaging job loss, and now jobs are coming back? I don't think That's the data. I, I don't think jobs are coming back. Well, not. Fact. But they were they're, they're saying they're not, we were losing seven hundred thousand jobs but a month. They're not now we're gaining ba seventy thousand. They're, they're not coming back as fast as uh, previous recoveries. But this isn't? Is. But that, are you better off now than you were then? You're still better off. I now. would say no. My, my, I would answer that question no. You're not better, even though. No. If, if you were losing seven hundred thousand jobs I'm a month about, before, uh, you know. I don't. People, I don't know. I, I, how can you say no? People are not making a decision on on the collective, uh, you know, feeling of people. The, the the reason that question is asked is you want people to look at themselves and say, "Am I feeling better?" I think. I think most people would say they're not doing as well today as they were four years ago. Really? Okay. Yeah, I would say so. so. That's my opinion. So that means that's why they have to make this a choice election. That would be if it's a referendum election, Obama loses. A choice election, looking forward, if they say to you, will Romney make things better for you than Obama? And the team Obama says they'll answer that no. Well, he wins. They are, they that's, are, their, that's the strategy. Make this a choice election, not a referendum yes, a, election. Yes, a choice election, and also that you know, in, in any campaign, if you can define your if you can define your opponent before your opponent defines himself, your chances of victory are okay. are, are greatly improved. And that's that's exactly what they're doing with in Romney the middle of right July. Now, yeah. With by the time with, people see this, it'll be different. But in the middle the of support, July, with the support of the national news media. The, 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 Romney is going to okay. get no break on that, and uh, that's what's going to happen. So, is that true locally here in Chicago, or local ABC, NBC, CBS, Channel 9, WGN, part of the Tribune Company, TTW, part of the so-called public broadcasting system, are they all pretty much liberal too? Is the local Fox any different, or are they Pretty liberal. I don't really. I, Are I they don't, less biased than the national media? I, do, I don't detect a political uh, slant to to local news coverage. Yeah. I don't. You don't even to even to WTTW. No. Well, I mean, would you say Carol Marine is like the white line T -T down the middle no, of the road? Because she no. gives you 15 minutes of Carol Marine. She's supposed to be what you are—the white line down the middle of the road when she moderates programs. Now she may do it. But everybody knows she's a far left person because of the opinions she expresses in her sometimes column. You see, you may have views to the right, but people wouldn't even know that because you're not several times a week throwing well, out a far left. Column. You know, well that, that may be. And, and by the way, you're 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 just just to go back to that because you, yeah. you started the discussion with that, and I I'd like to come back and and address it because it 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 goes to a uh, it goes to my philosophy, as you say, the white line down the middle. When I was uh, uh, 20 years old, my first political hero was Barry Goldwater. I went to the 1964 Republican Convention at the Cow Palace. I was there when President Eisenhower was uh, cheered when he pointed to the liberals in the anchor booth. I remember when Nelson Rockefeller was booed, the governor of New York. So I was at a pivotal moment when the conservatives took over the Republican Party. I'll never forget it. And by the way, it was on, I believe, 
Ironically, I believe it was on July 17th of 1964, wow. the anniversary of when we were taping this broadcast. But when that happened, it bothered me. I always knew I wanted to go into the media. So that would be 48 years ago. But it always bothered me. It always bothered me that if I got... Barry Goldwater was so vilified by the national news media and by the news media in general. He was not given a break on anything. Every word that he uttered was taken and twisted out of, out of proportion. And yet he was a great American, but I thought he was really vilified. And the night that Barry Goldwater lost, I went home, flipped on the light in my bedroom, I had Barry Goldwater's picture on the wall, and I went to bed and I cried myself to sleep that night. But I said that if I ever went into the media, I would never do to people who I disagreed with what the national media did to Barry Goldwater. But you, but and you, that's why, I'm, and I'm glad you said it, the white line down the middle, because that's what I've always tried to be. If people watch me week in, week out, Jeff, they, they, they will know where my political beliefs really are. They may say, well, he's rougher on this side, rougher on that side. But I try to be fair. But when some things come along, and by the way, I'll tell you an example when it came along. When some things come along that are just so egregious to me personally that I cannot look at them and stand back and be objective about them, then, then I will speak out. And a lot of people who are uh, liberals or Democrats who, who used to say you were the white line down the middle and we, we don't know where your politics were, where I think I lost some of them as fans or admirers was during the Clinton era, during the impeachment era. era. I think that Bill Clinton, uh, he was impeached. I think he disgraced the office. I think uh, the Monica Lewinsky incident to me was not just one indiscretion of, of a man that can't control himself. I spoke out against that. And a lot of liberals and a lot of Democrats still have never forgiven me because of that. But so be it. Well, so but would you say you spoke out then, and would you say it would be the case if you had to describe yourself, you were right of center generally? I would say that I'm. Uh, I would say that I'm. I'm right of center or moderate. Yes, because on some issues I think I'm liberal. On some issues I'm. I'm I may be. Uh, may be conservative. I'm, I'm pretty but much. But you're generally a, right of center. I'm generally uh, right of center, but I'm general. I'm also. Uh, I would say that I'm more libertarian in many have areas. You, have you always others. voted for Republicans for president? No. Can you tell me who you voted for? Who was a Democrat? Jimmy Carter. Barack Obama. You voted for Barack Obama. I did. And is and that, you know why? No. Well, I don't have an autograph book like you do, but you know, you and I both, we, we're in a unique situation. We happen to know a man who was running to become the leader of the free world. I was impressed Barack, with Barack Obama when I had him on my program. I liked him personally. Uh, we talked about baseball. We're both White Sox fans. He's from Chicago, and uh, I always liked Barack Obama, and frankly, uh, although I admire John McCain's war record, I think John McCain would have been an abysmal president. Did you change your mind? Will you vote for Barack Obama again? No. Okay. And we're going to continue to speak as the credits roll. And I very much want to thank our guest, Bruce Dumont. The time has gone all too fast. We haven't had a chance to talk about the Museum of Broadcast Communications. You can find out more about them by going to museum.tv okay and you should go we'll have Bruce back again I'm sure he'll come back we'll finish this conversation we'll talk more about the Museum of Broadcast Communications so you're voting for Rip Mid Romney I think so because well I'm, I'm you why know, I, why